Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Thanks for joining me today. Today I thought I'd talk a little bit about friendships and specifically six things that I've kind of identified, like things to look for in another person to see if the foundation of a good friendship is there before you, you know, invest all your time and energy into that relationship. So I'm gonna target this more towards the INFJ personality people. If you don't know what an INFJ is, it's just one of the 16 personality types, Myers-Briggs. You can go look it up if you're curious. Um, but to be honest, if you're the type of person who's watching a video about friendships, you know, you'll probably get something out of this. I think this will apply to any of the idealist personalities, which is the INFP, INFJ, ENFP, ENFJ. It seems like those four personalities are often kind of focused on people and relationships and how people fit into the world and society and all these kinds of topics. And I think as a result, many of us, we invest more time and energy and thought into our relationships. And that can be either a really good thing if we have somebody who's kind of reciprocating that friendship or that relationship. But it can also be a very frustrating thing if you're in a friendship or a relationship that just doesn't seem to be working and you're trying to make it work and trying to figure it out and it, there's just problem. I've been quite interested lately in trying to make new friends. And so I've been trying to come up with this framework. Um, and, and maybe this sounds like way too like methodical, I guess. Some people might think that I'm being a little crazy, like, oh, I wanna make a new friend. Okay, let me make a list of qualities that I'm looking for and let me now go and find that. So without further ado, let me jump into my list of six things to kind of look out for um, when you're trying to identify a possible, you know, good friendship. Or if these things are missing, then maybe that'll help kind of explain why you've got some turmoil in a, in a certain friendship in your life. All right, so the first thing on my list that I'm looking for in a friendship, or really any relationship, this one, is I think in order to feel close to a person, I've noticed that I need them to volunteer information. What do I mean by that? It's pretty simple. They're going through their life. They're having good things happen to them. They're having bad things happen to them. They're having frustrating things, challenging, you know, happy stuff. I need them to share that with me voluntarily without me having to in, like dig it out of them or without me having to like find out in roundabout ways. I'm sure we all have somebody in our life that, you know, you find out like something major happened, like they lost their job or like they got a new job or, you know, they went on a vacation. They're like in Brazil, but you find out about it later and you're like, how come I didn't know that? Like, why didn't, why didn't you tell me? And you know, some of us might actually be quite good at asking questions to get information out of people. So in the end, we get the information. But really, I'm not talking about that here. What I'm really talking about is somebody who makes it effortless to know them. They volunteer information, you can find this out. You know, I suspect that certain types of people they don't share this information because they don't really want to hear it from other people. They don't want to be informed by other people. So you know, that's, that's probably a good sign that it's going to be hard to have a relationship with that person. Um, for me, anyway, I need somebody who's going to volunteer information about their life. So the second thing I've identified, there's this lack of a barrier or wall in, in seeing the person. So on the surface, it sort of seems like that volunteering information thing, but it's a little different than that because if I ask a person a question and they sort of honor that question and answer it honestly or answer it thoroughly, I find that that makes me feel good. Um, I have this desire, I think, in my relationships to know people quite deeply. I've noticed with certain people, they have this natural wall and you can feel it because they won't let you past it. It's like, what is it? Is it like a, a level of secrecy, a level of privacy? And I don't want to criticize people for being private. I think what I'm trying to say is that it's just really hard to have a relationship with a person if they have one of those really firm walls up. And it's like you can't break through it. You can't get to know them. Um, the thing about this, though, is that certain people will, you know, it just takes time to lower the walls. 
I think it's really just, does this person want to be friends with you? Does this person, are they interested in you at all? If the answer is no, I think that you will feel that wall easier. If this person is interested in you and it's almost like turning their face towards you and opening themselves up, I think that wall feeling will dissipate. All right, so the third thing that I've identified that I feel is really important for a relationship, maybe one of the most important things, is emotional vulnerability. So one of the more interesting things about INFJs I've noticed is we can kind of like live on either sides of the spectrum of the thinkers slash feelers. So if you take something like an INFP, ENFP, very high in introverted feeling, um, we can get along really well with INFPs and ENFPs. And we can kind of move right into that whole feeling mode and have these very emotional conversations or emotionally based. But on the flip side, we can kind of flip into logic mode. INFJs are also very high in introverted thinking. We can easily flip into a mode of sort of like cold, hard logic. And then we can match up really well with the thinking type people like the INTJs or ENTPs. I find I get along really well with those types of people as well. But here is the thing that I've noticed. INTJs, ENTPs, any of those thinking people. I, I can have amazing conversations with them about all kinds of ideas, right? Um, very rational or very logical conversations. And it can be quite fulfilling because it kind of validates my need for rationality almost or my need for things to make sense. So those are the people I go to for those conversations. However, when it comes to having a really deep friendship or a close connection with somebody, I also really do require a level of emotional sharing or emotional vulnerability. In order to build emotional intimacy, I think vulnerability is needed. So I think the one issue with the thinking-based personalities is, you know, they can be good friends, but I also think they have to be healthy enough to kind of open up emotionally now and then and to be emotionally vulnerable I find that I, like, I need that to feel like there's this level of closeness. Because if you're just talking about ideas all day, you know, I don't know, and maybe, maybe I'm just funny or maybe the INFJs are just funny in that, you know, you can have a really good conversation with somebody that you've just met. I could be at a party. This often happens to me. I go to a party and then all of a sudden I end up in the corner talking to somebody about some random topic for like 45 minutes. But I wouldn't say that I have a friendship with that person. So talking intellectually, talking about ideas is nice. But what is a friend, really? A friend is somebody that I can be emotionally vulnerable with and share my struggles, share my joys, share my kind of share those thoughts that are a little more, how do I say, uh, share those thoughts that maybe are a little more vulnerable. And then in return, I feel like I need to hear that from them to know that they trust me. I feel like if somebody doesn't share themselves emotionally, it kind of triggers this feeling like, oh, maybe, maybe they don't trust me because that's what I would do. If I don't share myself emotionally with somebody, it's because I don't know them or I don't trust them. So anyway, something that I think is actually very important. Can this person be emotionally vulnerable with you? All right, so now that I've talked sort of about that emotional side, number four is kind of that flip side, and maybe I already touched on it here, but I need somebody who can be rational slash logical, at least somewhat. Um, you know, if it's all rationality, all logic, I find that a little dry. But, you know, if you flip into somebody who is all feeling and almost no rationality, I also find that, you know, I can't... I can't truly be myself around a person like that. Like, what am I really doing most of the time? I'm looking around at the world, I'm looking around at people and I'm going, hmm, that doesn't make sense. And I might be looking at, let's say, cultural norms or the way things are done, and I'm often dissecting these things on a very deep level and sort of coming to conclusions that certain things just don't make any sense and that maybe we need to change this. Uh, and I've noticed that I kind of require a conversation with people to really unpack a lot of these ideas. And so 
yes, it's nice to have somebody that you have an emotional connection with and they're emotionally vulnerable, but if it kind of ends there and they can't carry a good intellectual conversation, then I also find that a little unfulfilling. So in a way, I almost feel like this is sort of like icing on the cake. I, I do, I think emotional vulnerability is more important than this, but it is nice to have both is what I've noticed. All right, on to number five. And I think this is specifically an INFJ thing. Um, I think INFJs need people in their lives that can kind of handle some darkness or handle some deep intensity. I'm not sure the best way to really describe this, but every INFJ I know, they have the ability to go to some pretty deep, dark places sometimes. And like I know myself specifically, I can have some pretty dark thoughts at times. And sometimes these thoughts are the result of me just being down or I might be maybe a little extra cynical. Uh, that can happen for sure. But a lot of times I feel like being a realist. So like there's pessimists, there's optimists. Well, what's the realist? I, I try to be a realist. I try to see things how they are. Um, and sometimes I think that involves admitting some sort of darker truths about the world. Um, I've noticed that many people are terrified of these thoughts. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, to be at the end of the day, in order to really feel like I have a connection with somebody, this person kind of needs to be able to handle that. And so my girlfriend, Lexi, she's also an INFJ. And out of anybody I've ever met, um, that one of the things I really appreciate about her is that she can handle that side of me. And it's not just handle it. She very comfortably handles this sort of darker side of me. I remember one of her friends one time, this was a few years ago, um, she met me for the first time. And then afterwards, her impression was of me that I was one of those dark and stormy people. Um, she was intrigued by me and liked me, but she could sense this sort of dark side of me. I mean, I don't even know, really know what I'm trying to say right now. Um, I think in general, INFJs can be quite warm and inviting and they want people to feel comfortable. But if you really get to know an INFJ, I guarantee that you'll see their dark side sometimes. Actually, I was just talking to somebody this week. So she is married. She's married to a very bright, sunny type of person. And she was trying to articulate that he has trouble kind of handling the darker side of her when she doesn't feel like an optimist and he wants to be an optimist. And I think really in that situation, what can it trigger in an INFJ especially? It can trigger this feeling of being misunderstood if a person won't listen to you or they're scared to go to a place with you. And an INFJ that feels misunderstood is not a good thing. I think in order for us to feel understood, we need somebody who can handle our thoughts. And so if you don't have anybody like that in your life, I think that's one actually really good reason to get a counselor or a therapist and find a therapist who can handle that so that you can go to those places and talk about those things maybe that many people are scared to talk about. So yeah, so the ENFJs, I love ENFJs. I have one, one of my closest friends is an ENFJ. And she is, is, the thing that's amazing about her is that she can sort of go to that logical, rational side and she can, but on the, on the flip side, she wants to talk about people and can be emotional, emotionally vulnerable and she shares information. But one thing I do notice about the ENFJs is they're, they're a little bit, like how do I say it? They're almost happier than the INFJs or they're less intense or less dark. And I wonder, sometimes I feel like those types of people can't really go down as far as I need sometimes. But, you know, maybe I'm a little more intense than normal people. I'm not sure. But I suspect that most INFJs 
cover up a lot of their a lot of their dark side out of fear of judgment from the people around them. So the last thing I want to talk about, number six, pretty simple. And I, I think it's kind of important though. It's somebody who's available in person. So unfortunately that kind of eliminates anybody that you meet on the internet or long distance friendships. And I'm not trying to say those people can't be fulfilling and it can't be fulfilling to have a long distance friendship or a long distance relationship. But I've noticed for myself, there's something special about actually sitting down with a person and looking into their face and having that face to face connection. And something I've noticed is that if I don't see a friend in a while, I can almost start to feel a little more cynical or I get a little more suspicious about the relationship, like whether or not that's real. Is that a real friendship? But I, I've noticed that it's really healthy for me to actually physically hang out with other people, which is hard, right? Because oftentimes it's, it's hard to make me leave my house. I kind of just will stay at home and hibernate a lot of the time. And I almost feel like I, a level of anxiety to go out and socialize sometimes. Um, but when I do, when I make a coffee date with a friend and we just go and sit and talk, I always find that helps me. First of all, it helps the friendship and the connection, but I, I find it, it helps me on another level. It makes me feel more positive. It makes me feel more connected to the world rather than disconnected just off by myself, you know, hiding in my, in my house or my office. There's something really important about that face-to-face -face connection that INFJs need. I think other personality types like ENFPs, ENFJs, they will also require that, but they also seem to have less of a barrier to go out and get that. The INFJs and INFPs specifically, I think, will, they, they need those connections, but then they're also the types that are more likely to just maybe hide out at home. All right, so those are my six things I wanted to talk about today. Hope you got something out of it. If you have any comments about any of this or you have something else maybe that, um, that you look for in a friendship, drop it in the comments. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day. See ya.